I'm Andrew Chesterton from carsguide.com.au and this is the Subaru Outback Sport XT. And yes, that means it gets the new and more powerful turbocharged engine. But you can have this exact same car, only without the turbo, and you'll pay a fair bit less for it. So if you have the Subaru Outback on your shopping list, you're no doubt wondering whether the extra power is worth your extra spend. Well, happily, I've spent three months behind the wheel of this car to answer that very question for you. So right this way. The Outback range kicks off at about 47 grand drive away for the base model Outback, then climbs to around 52 grand, again drive away, for the non-turbo version of the Sport that we're driving. But shopping for this better engine adds around 5k to the asking price, with this turbocharged XT Sport pitched at around 57 grand drive away. You get heated seats and auto opening boot, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and a big 11.6 inch portrait style screen in the center of the cabin. There's also USB-A and USB-C connection points. There's also a smart key with push button start, a 4.2 inch screen in front of the driver, LED lighting all around, and more safety systems than you can shake a stick at. I must admit, I'm pretty taken with the Outback, and that includes the way it looks. For one, it's most definitely not an SUV, which is a refreshing change, with Subaru just about the only company left that can really make a wagon work and sell here in Australia. But I also like the way that it looks tough, but without really overdoing it. I'm a fan of all the black cladding and the chunky edges, these big 18-inch black alloys, and the standard roof rails. And unlike some Japanese designs, it doesn't look too fussy or overdone. It looks kind of simple, timeless and like it will age pretty well. Inside, you'll find a practical and really very functional space with nice materials and touch points too. Now, of course, this big portrait style screen takes pride of place and while there isn't much in the way of hard buttons, there are some clever shortcuts, especially for climate control, which lives in this little shortcut here. You press it, the climate control screen comes up, you make your changes and you close it again. And it just saves you digging through lots of screens to put on things like seat heaters or change the temperature in the cabin. Now elsewhere, there's lots of little hidey holes, one here, one here, this kind of nifty center console, which has a shallow entry and then a much deeper storage space. There's storage in the doors and of course cup holders in the middle, but there are some kind of practicality quirks. So this little bin here, you think would be perfect for a phone charger, but it isn't one. Instead, you have to plug in, but the way these are recessed, makes it really very difficult to actually plug in your USBs without first moving the gear lever or turning into a bit of a Cirque du Soleil performer. Of course, the secret weapon in any wagon's arsenal is practicality, and in the Outback, that starts here at the boot. Now, seats up, Subaru reckons you'll find 522 litres of room, but drop those rear seats, and the Outback transforms into something of a little courier van with 1,783 litres of space on offer, measured to the ceiling. Now, trust me, that kind of practicality comes in really handy. You won't use it every day, maybe not even every week, but when you need it, you will really appreciate that it's here. Trust me, I have knocked off trips to Bunnings that you wouldn't believe, feeding garden sleepers through here, filling the rest with mulch, and it's done it all very easily. Now there's plenty of room in the back seat for passengers as well. I'm sitting behind my own 175 centimetre driving position, and as you can see, plenty of knee room, plenty of headroom, and I've got seat heating in the outboard seats, our own air vents, and twin USB connections as well. But there's one other nifty trick I kind of like. The back seats also recline which means your backseat passengers can really kick back and get comfy on those long haul road trips. So the turbocharge option lifts the outputs from 138 kilowatts and 245 newton meters to a healthy 183 kilowatts and 350 newton meters, and that really makes for a far more engaging drive. But it also lifts the max brake towing capacity from 2,000 kilograms to 2,400 kilograms, so it's a little bit more practical as well. Now there's only two models in the Outback family that get it, this Sport and the Touring that sits above it, but there is talk about eventually adding it to the entry level model as well, and it really solves one of the biggest criticisms leveled at the Outback, and that is a lack of punch for things like overtaking when you're on the freeway, that kind of thing. Now the engine pairs with a CVT automatic, I guess because you can't win them all, and like all Subarus, it powers all four wheels. 
So there is a small fuel-shaped fly in the Subaru Outback's ointment though, and that of course is the amount of petrol it uses. So Subaru reckons on the combined cycle, you should see nine liters per 100 kilometers. But to be honest, in the first month, I was north of 12 liters a 100. And even over the months that have followed, my average has always been around 12 liters per 100 kilometers. Now it also drinks premium fuel, which at the moment is expensive. Just yesterday I filled up, paid north of $2 a liter, a big 63 liter tank means you're looking at about 125 or 130 dollars to fill this up so that is a fairly pricey proposition as well so the big news with this xt outback is its turbocharged engine and i gotta say it really does make a difference to the way this car drives believe it or not my sister just bought a nearly identical outback but the non-turbo version so i've got plenty of experience in both and this is a more engaging punchier, more confident drive experience, solely owing to the extra power and offered by that turbocharged engine. If it was my money, I think I'd be trying to find a way to spring for it. It really is a better drive. Elsewhere though, it is just a super easy kilometer eater. There's a reason these things look every bit as at home in the city as they do in some dusty outpost. And that's because this thing does feel like it can go pretty much anywhere in real comfort. Sure, it's got some off-road capability thanks to that X mode system and you can probably go further afield than you might be expecting. But if you stick to the tarmac, it is always just a really comfortable drive. The seats are comfy, the ride experience is comfy. There's not too much noise in the cabin. It's just an easy way to travel. Now, when I say it's a fairly quiet driving experience, I mean by that, of course, wind noise and road noise, which is locked out fairly admirably. But there is a fair bit of noise every time you plant your foot. I think it's probably the drone from the CVT and maybe a little bit of engine noise as well, but it is a constant and you do notice it. The other thing I found is that some of the tech in the car can be a bit twitchy. So for example, the, the wireless Apple CarPlay works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes I need to stop the car, turn it off, and then restart it to get it moving again. Now, to be honest, all of these things are fairly minor gripes. I've actually really enjoyed my time behind the wheel of this car. I've liked it in the city. I've liked it when I've taken it further afield. It does tick a lot of boxes, especially on the practicality front. Now, obviously there is a whole bunch of high-tech safety stuff on offer here, and I'm not gonna bore you with that list now. In fact, if you wanna read all about it, head over to carsguide.com.au, but there is one thing that is actually just a tiny bit creepy. So if I'm driving straight ahead and I take my eyes off the road here, it buzzes at me and tells me to keep my eyes on the road, which yes, is a handy safety feature, but it's also just a tiny bit creepy and something that sticks in your mind a little bit. You remember that the Subaru is watching you when you're singing along to your favorite Spotify playlist, for example. Now there's a five year unlimited kilometer warranty on board here, which to be totally honest, is really just okay by today's standards. And servicing is required every 12 months or 15,000 kilometers. Now speaking of servicing, it's a little bit more expensive in the Subaru as well. They do have a cap price servicing program, but you'll pay just under $3,000 for your first five years of ownership. To put that into perspective, Toyota RAV4, for example, will cost you just over $1,100 for the same period. The highest praise a motoring journalist can pay any new car is when they utter that mega rare phrase, you know what, I reckon I'd have one of these. But when it comes to the Subaru Outback Sport XT, you know what, I reckon I'd have one of these. Now to read all of my dispatches on this car and reviews on thousands of others, head over to carsguide.com.au.